Hey, Dawson Ness here from The Min Method. In this video, I'm gonna show you my process for coaching people through conversation, and that includes how do they improve their vocabulary and their grammar. Now, I'm gonna show you now um, a session I had with a friend of mine who's an actress, has very uh, limited Spanish background, just what you hear kind of being American. Um, she speaks French, she learned how to speak French, uh, so she does have language experience. Um, and as we'll see, this will be her first session, we'll see how she progressed throughout the whole thing. Last night, I spent the night in my apartment, with my roommate because my room is being Airbnb'd out. So this morning I got up and did a bunch of laundry and cleaned the apartment. I scrubbed the uh, stove and made tea for my roommate and I. All right, cool. So I started off like, hey, tell me about something on top of your head, right? And then as she's saying that, I'm capturing all of the key words of what she just said, right? And I put them in this thing I call story stacks, which is basically the universal grammar of all human experience is characters taking actions in settings on objects with different ways to describe any of those past four things and things that connect, you know, the storyline. Anyways, um, if you organize your vocabulary that way, as opposed to like flashcards or a stack, you're able to experience and view what you know in context. So once we have all this here, now we know what words would you need to know in Spanish to express the same point. And how do you find that out? Do you Google it? No. Do you, you know, go into a dictionary? No. You go into the street or you go to your friend, you go to a human being, and then you ask them, hey, what do you call this thing? Como se dice, right? So with that one phrase, she now, Lindsay now has the keys to the entire Spanish universe. Listen. Como se dice make? Hacer. 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 Mm -hmm. Hacer. Hacer. Uh, All right, cool. So you see that, right? So she doesn't see the word written down. It's just, it's just hearing the sounds and imitating it. Last night, um, I, I sleep with my roommate and uh, an Airbnb guest sleep in my room. All right, so to understand what's going on here, I have to explain this concept that is uh, very key. All right, so this is number one reason I think a lot of people struggle unnecessarily when trying to learn a language. And you can explain it quite simply is that the conventional approach teaches us to prioritize sounding the same grammatically and vocabulary-wise to native speakers than being sufficient enough to actually communicate and connect with them. What do I mean? So say someone was learning English and you know, maybe I would say, hey man, could you pass me the, the sandwich, right? But I'm just learning English for like a couple of weeks. All those grammar, can you pass, can, was, can pass, all that grammar, that's way too complex for a beginner. However, you can say, you, me, sandwich, pass, yes, right? And everyone understands what you mean because it's sufficient, but if you write that down in your high school Spanish class or English class, you're going to get an F, right? Because you didn't conjugate the verbs right. You didn't use the prepositions. You see, the priorities got completely flipped upside down because this is not how you learn anything. You start like stumbling around until you kind of get it done. And then you start to smooth it out a little bit. And then once you're smoothed in, now you're in the flow of the game and you can actually listen to people and pay attention and start to refine it so you sound more like them, more similar to them, and eventually the same as them. That is the natural progression of all learning. So we just got it backwards. So anyways, knowing that, you'll see what that actually looks like now. Um, now I, I'm coaching her to not conjugate Spanish words. She's, she's, not, she's not have time for that. It's like, hey, use these como se dice you just did to tell me the sentence. Dang it. Last night, um, I, I sleep with my roommate and uh, an Airbnb guest sleep in my room. Anoche yo dormir con yo compañera de cuarto e mi huésped dormir a mi cuarto. All right, cool. So there it is. So all she did there was use. Uh, this is the kind of right to generate new sentences. And then she's just using those words. Um, and then we smooth it out, get more practice in, and boom, now we integrate that into the context of an actual conversation. So I have Cecilia, our Peruvian uh, co-star here. Lindsay, ¿qué hiciste anoche y esta mañana? 
because he's asking, what did you do? So asking you're like, what did you do? But now tell us in Spanish. Anoche yo uh, limpia mi ropa y uh, obría mi bolsa y yo dormir con mi compañera de cuarto. ¿Cómo se dice? Because. ¿Por qué? And that is how you said, como se dice, right? So instead of going, oh, I don't know the word, I give up. So, uh, como se dice, and then boom, now you keep flowing. Okay, porque me huesto, huésped, huésped, huésped dormir a mi cuarto. Boom, so there you go. That's the first time her using a word she just learned in the decontextualized, but in the story stacks, then coming here, wisp. Gives her the thing, boom, guarantee you, next time she's going to remember it. This is the path to memorizing vocabulary. Compare this to sitting at home with like a bunch of two you know, note cards, looking at scribbles by yourself, like the rain in the background. You can't compare. This is how you learn. You have to be in context. Now we're going to turn it up, though. If you do an italki or you work with a tutor, for the most part, uh, the most you get is just, hey, how was your day? Like, tell me more about your life. And like, you know, you'd be catching up with friends talking, which is great. The issue is when you're learning a language and you're still kind of, you know, don't have that much vocabulary yet, you have a very limited amount of things you can talk about. So it gets very repetitive really fast. And that's one of the more common complaints uh, I hear from people who go into um, lots of conversation practice. So the question then is, well, how can we make things more interesting, right? How can we create the realm of possibility for a person um, regardless of what level there are? And then that's how I came up with role play, integrating role play into our process, role play theater, which is why I got Lindsay, because she's an actress, so I knew she'd do great at it. So Cecilia, our tutor, is going to play the part of, her, of Lindsay's roommate. And then Lindsay's going to come in and then get really angry about the mess in the apartment. All right. So boom, action. Bienvenida. Hola, Cecilia. ¿Qué pasó? A nada. ¿Qué pasa de qué? Sí, a nada. Sí, apartamento es mucho sucia. No, está bien. No importa. No, es mucho importante. Es mucho importante. Es no bien. ¿Por no. qué, Cecilia? ¿Por qué es la... ¿Cómo se dice kitchen? Cocina. Cocina mucho sucia. Ah, porque tenía que cocinar para comer. ¿Por qué el salsa? ¿Cómo se dice on countertop? En la mesada. En, en la, la mesada. The kitchen table, mesada. Mesada, mesada. Y salsa en la mesada. Sí, salpicó un poco porque hice pasta. ¿Cómo se dice? Then, like, entonces, entonces, limpiar la mesada. Sí, pero ya empieza mi programa en la televisión. Después, más tarde. No. ¿Cómo se dice now? Ahora. 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 No, más tarde. Si quieres, hazlo tú. No, Cecilia, ahora, ahora. <laughs> Tú eres mucho sucia. No, no soy sucia. Tú eres muy limpia. Pero yo soy normal. <laughs> yo esperar a tu mamá. Madre. Um, yo esperar a tu madre. No, mi madre es igual que yo. No le importa. <laughs> Y es mucho importante, Cecilia. Oh. Yo pensar tu vamos. ¿A dónde? ¿A limpiar? No, <laughs> tú vamos al apartamento. ¿Que me vaya? No, este sí. departamento, yo pago la mitad, yo me quedo. Si tú quieres, te vas. No, 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 no. 
mi apartamento, mi nombre es un solo nombre sobre, ¿cómo se dice? Lease. Alquiler. alquiler. El alquiler. Ajá. Alquiler. Mi nombre uh -huh. es un solo nombre, alquiler. Uh -huh. ¿Cómo se dice? Therefore. Entonces. 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 Yo. Hasta la vista. <laughs> That was good. That was great. That was brilliant. Perfect. <laughs> that was so role play theater. Um, what it does is that it amplifies the the meaning. It amplifies the context, the emotionality, the intensity, the level of presence that you have in the moment. So if your mind is switched on, you're in flow. You're a different character, which is our whole mission here as language learners, anyways, to become a new person. Essentially, like expand our personality. We were pretty systematic here as well on the back end. So after I record all that, as they were talking, new vocabulary would come up and then I would capture it back on that spreadsheet. Boom, so now you have all these new words in the spreadsheet. And then now I'm like, okay, let's go back into your episodic memory. And do you remember when this came up? Uh, uh entonces? Yeah, entonces. Entonces. Ahora. 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 And notice that way of refining and smoothing things out. You're not going to get it perfectly right. And then they repeat and you hear it better. So you repeat it better. You know, that is this, that's the process. Ahora. 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 Cucina. Cocina. Cocina. Boom. See those little tweaks. Cool, cool. See how close it is, right? Oh. That's another thing people should be aware of. People think in black and white. They think in 100%, 0%. If I put, what's the word for kitchen? And she was like, Dumbledore. I'm like, no, I mean, good, good try. <laughs> but you know, obviously you just, that was not at all related to what we actually heard. The actual thing was cocina, right? So if she's saying cocina, that's 95%. Would you like to get 95% on your test, right? But we don't treat it that way. We're, once again, we're conditioned to treat it that like, oh, I got it wrong. That's a zero, I'm failing. Uh, thank you to Lindsay. I'll have her have the final word. I asked her at the end, uh, what did you think? How did you find that experience? Again, this is their first time doing anything with uh, my stuff before. Super fun. I'm very, I'm amazed at how much I was able to retain. Um, I was a little skeptical at first because I'm not an auditory learner at all. I'm very much a visual processor. Um, and so not being able, even without being able to see all of the words in Spanish, which I usually need to read something to be able to get it in my mind. I think that it's, it feels like, a, even though it's not, it feels like a slightly more somatic process because there's the acting involved. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed at how quickly I was able to pick things up. And the last little bit where we were improv was wonderful because it, it's already a situation that I feel super passionately about and that I had to recently deal with. Um, and it brought up a lot of words that I otherwise probably wouldn't, like would not have thought to look up or try to learn for, for my next trip to a Spanish speaking country. Um, I also feel having gone through that process, I feel more confident just with the idea of speaking Spanish to a Spanish speaker, um, having gotten to like role play that. So I think that I would feel more confident, you know, going to going to Williamsburg or going down the street to my bodega and talking to the Ecuadorian guy who works in my bodega and like ha try to have a conversation with him, um, which is not something that I would have done before, even though I, you know, I don't really know a lot of Spanish, um, but it, it gave me a lot of confidence. Yeah.